Hello everyone, welcome to Skillshare Secrets. This is lesson number four, and I'm gonna be focusing on audio quality. And this is such a big topic, whereas, you know, I feel like we're gonna have probably multiple videos dealing with audio quality. But I'll try to keep this course really simple regarding the secrets that I've learned about audio quality and what I think that you should be evaluating. So we're gonna deal with some of the problems that I saw in teachers' courses, and then we're gonna talk about some things that you can do to ensure that you don't make the same mistakes. So some of the problems that I notice when listening to other teachers' courses is, number one is excessive background noises. That could be like a hissing sound. It could be, you know, a car traffic noise that is extremely loud. You know, to a certain extent, you may have some traffic noise, but it can't be excessive. Uh, I've, I've noticed situations where they may have their microphone, their microphone volume too high and it hurts the listener's ears. Uh, sometimes they can have the music too loud where you can't hear what the narrator is saying. You know, um, there's just a lot of different distractions that I notice in people's audio. You know, there could be situations where they're clicking on their keyboard or device to transition between their presentation and all those things take away from the quality of your course. And the more noise or distractions in your course, the less, the less time someone's gonna listen to your course. And so if you wanna increase your watch time, one of the biggest and most important things that you can do is improve your audio quality. Now, I don't expect your audio to be perfect, but it does need to be professional or somewhat decent. And to be honest, my standards are much higher than what Skillshare's expectations are because I've heard some audio that I would never pass to go on Skillshare, but yet, you know, there's teachers out there that have, in my opinion, poor audio quality. And if you really wanna stand out from the competition, the best way you can do that is by having superior audio quality, because that's gonna give the people who are listening to your course a, a very relaxed experience. And that's also gonna create trust. If you put the time and energy into producing a professional product, people are going to want to listen and learn from you because they're gonna look at you as a professional. But if you put out some of the worst quality audio, people are gonna lose trust in you, say this person didn't even take the time out to make sure their audio is decent. Just yesterday, literally, I was listening to a course, you know, there was a guy that was uh, doing a cooking tutorial and I could not hear anything he was saying hardly. It, within just like a few seconds, I already knew I was not going to watch his course, even though I was interested in his course and what he was producing. So you have a situation where you have a customer, I'm the customer, and I was interested in what he was creating. He didn't lose me because he didn't create something that was of interest. He lost me because his audio quality was not good enough. And that's the moral of the story. Poor audio quality will cause you to lose a customer or a viewer who would watch your course. Not because they didn't have interest in your course, but because it was too many distractions. And so in essence, you're losing your earnings or your watch time that translates into earnings because of poor audio quality. So it creates a barrier where you lose interest, even though there may be a market for the type of course that you're producing. So this is how important it is to have good audio quality, okay? You cannot miss this factor and I cannot emphasize it enough. Make sure you have good audio quality. I think you've learned enough about what the problems are with the audio quality. Don't have the volume levels too high. Don't have the music too high where I can't hear you speaking. Don't have too much background noise. Make sure you're close enough to the microphone. That, that That's another point. Sometimes the issue is not with the microphone. Sometimes the issue is the person who's speaking is too far away from the microphone. If you're recording with a, a, a camera on your, like a, a, a DSLR camera or a mirrorless camera, and you're 10 feet away, 20 feet away from your camera, and you're expecting that camera microphone to pick up your audio in a clean manner, that's not gonna happen. You have to be within like one foot of the microphone at least. 
You know, honestly, you should be no further than probably six inches away from your microphone to get a nice, clean, solid audio. And uh, one of the other benefits of being close up on the microphone, not like eating the microphone, obviously, is that it's going to give you a nice, clean sound and you can lower your microphone volume level the closer you are. Now, again, you don't want to be eating the microphone. You want to be within like maybe six inches of the microphone and if you're about that distance, you can lower the microphone sensitivity so that it picks up less background noise. So by being close in proximity to the microphone, you can reduce its sensitivity because you're closer and that lower threshold of sensitivity means it's going to pick up less environmental noise. But I don't want to go too deep into dealing with the actual microphone because that's a whole nother subject matter in its own. But just know that being closer will help you to be able to lower the microphone. Now, you don't want to be breathing into the microphone as well. So make sure that your breath is not being picked up constantly in the microphone. No one wants to hear, hear you taking massive deep breaths. Now, if they can hear your breath a little bit, that's OK. But make sure it's not excessive because, again, that's going to create distractions in the in the video. OK, so now let's deal with some solutions. What can you do to make sure that your audio quality is up to task? Number one, creating sample audio first. Create a sample recording audio and then listen back to it and check and see if there's actually any problems with your audio. I, I don't know if, if some of these teachers actually listened to their audio, but if they actually listened to it and checked it, they would know that they have a problem with their audio. So make sure you listen to your audio before you publish it. And I don't mean just listen to it on an open speaker. If you're listening to your audio on an open speaker, that noise coming from your open speaker, rather on your laptop speakers or some other device, is going to mix in with your environmental noise that you're sitting in. OK, the, whatever room you're sitting in is going to blend that that noise with your noise coming from your recording. OK, so you don't want to listen on an open speaker. Make sure you have some kind of headset, preferably one that covers your full ear so that you can isolate the sound and only hear the sound from your your microphones recording rather than hearing instead of hearing the environmental noise surrounding you. OK, so make sure that you have somewhat of a good headset. Ho hopefully you can get one that's within the hundred fifty dollar to two hundred dollar range that will isolate your ears. But I'm not going to go into headsets because, again, another whole topic that I don't want to discuss right now in this video. Just know that you need to have something that helps you to hear your audio better and somewhat isolate the sound from, you know, that's around you, your environmental sounds. So um, let's now talk about dealing with the audio levels and making sure your narration is not too loud. One of the ways you can do that is if you have an audio editing program, of course, you can do that. And, mo and most video editing programs have an audio meter. Now, if you're not familiar with audio meters, then you can check out my course. I'm going to post a link in the description or in the comment section or maybe both. And I'm going to give 100 free links to those who are subscribed to my channel. So if you click on that link, you can watch the course for free on Skillshare and you can learn about audio levels. Now, that course is not going to be all about audio levels. So you'll want to scroll ahead or go to the lesson that talks about, you know, audio levels or audio metering. And when you click on that lesson, it's going to teach you how to identify looking at an audio meter when the audio level is too high. And ideally, you know, you don't want to you don't want to exceed a certain threshold. And I'll, you'll just watch the course to learn that if you want to know more about that. I'm not going to teach you what I've already taught and I'm already offering a hundred free seats to those who are subscribed to this channel. So go check it out. It doesn't cost you anything anyway. Now, um, dealing with the audio levels being too low, that's something else that you're going to want to consider. And that's something that, you know, you'll be able to know by looking at the audio meter. You know, if you have it excessively low, the meter will be excessively low. So when you look at the course, you'll be able to just look at that and know it on your own. It's not really something that I have to teach you. And when you listen back to your audio, you'll know. One of, one of the rules that I have personally 
and this is not actually in the course, if I cannot hear myself clearly at 50% of the volume on the device that I'm listening on, then that means my audio quality is probably not loud enough. If at 50% of the volume, I'm struggling to hear myself, that's a problem. Because in most cases, when you listen to professionally produced content on YouTube, for example, at 50% quality, I mean, at 50% audio volume, you can usually hear the person somewhat clearly. It may not be perfect, but you should be able to hear them clearly. And so that's really my measuring stick to know if my audio quality is good or poor, aside from obviously looking at the audio meter. So those are some tips that I have for you to ensure that you have good audio quality. And you're probably wondering, why did you go so long about this audio quality? Because it's the foundation of everything. If you don't get this component right, there's no point in you making any type of course for any platform if you fail or miss this step. OK, so make sure that you get it right. Another important thing that you want to consider is that, you know, the room that you're recording in, you know, and I've, I said I wouldn't make this video too long, but I'm really excited to share this information with my subscribers here on YouTube is make sure that you are in a room that has a lot of furniture. You know, make sure that the room you're in has a lot of furniture because that's going to reduce the echoes in your audio. And this is something I didn't cover that I should have should have covered, so I'm covering it now. Make sure that there's plenty of furniture because that's going to absorb the echoes that could occur in your audio. And you don't want echoing in your audio. That's just really, really bad. And if you don't have a room that has a lot of furniture in it, one of the options you could do is record your audio in a closet that has a lot of clothes in it. And that's going to help absorb the, um, the echoes as well and reduce that in your audio. So consider trying that out as a method to give you a nice, clean audio. Another thing that you could do, too, is record your audio at a time that no one is awake when there is no one traveling on the roads. You know, I sometimes wake up 1 a.m., 2 a.m. to record audio. And when I do that, it's very unlikely that there's a lot of traffic happening outside. And it's very unlikely that someone is awake. So you got to have that drive to adapt to your situation. Because I know some people say, well, I'm in a place where there's loud noise during the day. Well, then you have to adjust your schedule to make it work. That's just the reality if you're going to succeed with producing courses. Another thing that you want to consider is consistency in your audio quality. Do not change the recording room for multiple sessions. If you change the recording room for some of your lessons in your course, that can alter the audio quality. So ideally, you want to stay in the same room with the microphone in the same exact location so that you get consistent audio quality every single time you record and also making sure your your sensitivity level of your microphone is set to the exact same level every single time you record to get a consistent synonymous audio quality you don't want to have it where they go from one lesson and the audio is super loud and they go to the next lesson and the audio is super low so make sure you have consistent settings for every single lesson in the same course that you're recording. Now, if you create a new course and you want to adjust the levels and change things around to a different setting and then have it consistent at those changes, then that's fine. But for whatever course you're currently working on, ideally you want to try to keep the settings the same, to keep things consistent because you don't want the audio to go super loud in the next lesson and hurt the student's ears because again, that's a distraction that could cause you to lose watch time. I'm also going to share with you guys a trick that I use personally to help me isolate my audio, even in a really loud environment. So let's say, for example, you have a situation where uh, there's traffic going on outside that you can hear somewhat. One of the things that you can do is turn a fan on. Now, ideally, you want to try to figure out what the balance is for this. If you can turn a fan on, a fan has a constant sound. It's just linear. 
And so if you turn that fan on, obviously don't face it directly at your microphone because it's gonna pick up all the wind noise. But if you face it away from your microphone, but it can pick up that sound, that constant sound of the fan, that fan noise can drown out, hopefully, the traffic noise outside. And when you go in post-production and you apply a filter to remove that fan noise, it will remove the fan noise and you'll never hear the noise that's coming out from outside, the traffic noise. And that's been a really successful trick that I personally use that has helped me so that if I do record in the daytime, about 90 to 95% of the traffic noise or other distractions never show up in the audio, no matter how loud it is for the most part. So it's a really awesome and cool trick that I personally use. So hopefully that, that helps you out and gives you some ideas. I also want to say this, I want to eliminate the myth that you have to have the best microphone to produce amazing audio quality. Let me tell you this, my highest performing, highest ranked course on Skillshare right now was recorded with my cell phone. Let me repeat that. It was recorded with my cell phone. It was recorded with my cell phone. And that basically means that it's not about what microphone you have. Instead, it's about you learning how to work with the tools that you have. So being able to use my cell phone microphone using the headset it came with proved to me there really is no excuse for having poor audio quality. If I can make an amazing course that's the highest ranked one that I have right now using just my cell phone's microphone, then there really is no excuse to, for poor audio quality. You know, if you, it's everyone, everyone has a cell phone, you know, and everyone probably has, for the most part, a headset that comes with their cell phone. Most people do, right? And even if you don't, you can use the microphone on your cell phone itself and you can get some decent audio quality out of it in most cases because people have expensive smartphones so why not use them to generate income by using it for your audio production and i've had clients personally who have used their cell phone to make high quality professional content for big companies so don't get too caught up in having the best equipment but instead, just be aware of your environment and analyzing what you need to do in your environment to improve the quality of your audio for your for your course. OK, so that is what I want to talk about for this particular uh, video. I don't really want to add anything else at this point. Maybe at a later date, we'll discuss audio in depth. And we'll actually go into some of the equipment maybe in a later video. But for this particular video, I feel like I've delivered enough uh, quality. I feel like I've delivered enough quality to drive more interest in this Skillshare secret series. And if you did enjoy this video, make sure you embed, comment, share and subscribe and stay tuned for future videos. And please check out other courses that I have on Skillshare, not just the one that I posted a link to will help me, your support on Skillshare will help me to continue to produce new content on YouTube. And this is really just my new way of actually ending up back on YouTube because people are asking me, are you coming back to YouTube? I haven't seen any videos from you and I really needed to come up with a plan. And this is just side information. If you don't want to listen to this, you don't have to, but this is just extra information. They were asking me, am I coming back to YouTube? Or am I going to still make videos? Well, this is one of the ways that I can make videos for you guys is if you support me on Skillshare, you watch my content, help me grow my audience, help me improve my rankings, which essentially will help me improve my earnings in the long run. Even if you're watching the course for free and I don't earn anything from those who watch it for free, at least I'll get exposure. And the more exposure I get, eventually some of those people will convert from being uh, free students who are just watching the course for free and then eventually transition into people who have paid accounts who watch it and I actually earn something. So just keep that in mind. So thank you guys for your support. All the 5,000 plus subscribers, you know, I would not be where I'm at on this channel without you guys. And I'm going to continue to try to share something with you of value. And uh, let me know what other types of videos 
that you would like me to produce on Skillshare Secrets because I want to give you guys a customer oriented approach and I want to make sure I'm delivering value to you for these videos. So let me know what you want to see because that's what's most important to me on this YouTube channel.